Hello, my name is Christine Marie Quigless. I am the Period Empress, and we are dedicated to ending period problems. One period problem that we're going to focus on today is inconsistent cycles. So when we experience inconsistent cycles, that might mean for some of us that we get our period every two weeks. For others of us, we might get our period every 45 days. For some of us in my past, I used to experience both. So sometimes I would get my period never every two weeks, but I have clients who have experienced it every two weeks. I would get my period sometimes 21 days later, sometimes 45 days later. That inconsistency can destroy vacations, destroy plans, um, make something like final exams when you're in school a very difficult and painful process um, and can end. The people who come to me for help with inconsistent cycles come to me because they've tried everything else, birth control, hormones, supplements, special diet, special exercise, functional health. They've tried all the things and nothing worked. And so then they come to me typically because the stakes are super, super high, as in they want to do fertility treatment and they can't if they don't have consistent cycles. So first let's talk about why we have inconsistent cycles. My what's and my why's and my how's are based on my solution, which a lot of people do not like because they want to be solved by the things I just mentioned. They wanna be solved by a pill. They wanna be solved by a shot. They wanna be solved by the doctor's office. And unfortunately, when you can look this up on Google, the medical answer to, is there a way to end period problems? Is there a way to end menstrual disorder? The medical answer is no, but we can work with the symptoms to help mitigate their effects. Well, we deal with causes. We handle the causes and the only reason we know that these are the causes is because when we treat the causes the symptoms stop if you want to know more about what i'm talking about we have an amazing white paper sponsored by the hendrix foundation where we go into the science behind our solutions that do not require any of those things that i mentioned earlier they in a nutshell don't require external intervention because our menstrual imbalance is actually our bodies telling us that how and who we are being is not okay when we change that and we live in menstrual alignment with ourselves with our wombs our amazing wombs, which happen to be in the center of our body. Isn't that interesting? If we follow what the womb, what this organ in the center of our body is asking us to do, if we give it what it needs based on what it needs in the four menstrual phases, they are distinct, they are distinct needs in all, in all forms of how we live, emotionally, intuitively, physically, emo uh, mentally. If we make those changes and live in alignment with those things, accommodate those things, the menstrual imbalance ends. Irregular cycles end. So the cause of irregular menstrual cycles. It all comes back to the same thing. So the cause for the irregular menstrual cycles is also the cause for endometriosis, is also the cause for fibroids, is also the cause for um, dysmenorrhea, any form of menstrual pain. It's also the cause for extreme cramps, it's also the cause for PMDD, it's also the cause for PCOS. Those things that I just listed are what members have come to the collective to fix. And even though they all come with different problems, they all receive the same solution because it all comes back to treating the causes and the cause is how we are being in the world. So in the case of irregular cycles, what happens is that, and this is covered more thoroughly in the white paper, in a nutshell, in our brain, we have this thing called an ovarian relay. It's in the brain. And for whatever reason, our awarenesses, our opportunities to show up in the world. So I've got a great idea. I've got a great idea. We're in the middle of a business meeting and we wanna share it. <gasps> What if somebody judges me? What if I embarrass myself? What if I make a mistake? I'm not empowered to, to suggest this. You know what? I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep it to myself and wait for a better time. I need to research it. I, I'm second guessing myself. This is a really bad idea. I am not good enough for this. I shouldn't have ever had this idea. Okay. I just took you on a quick journey. It's called the shame cycle. And I just took you on a quick journey of it. Well, what happens is that that is an example of an intuitive quashing. Okay, we just had, we just, we just quashed an intuitive idea because we could not externally validate a brilliant idea that we had. It's the idea just bloomed. Then we push it down. That pushing down that happens, happens in seconds. And what happens is it is dropped into the ovarian relay. And then that quashing that just happened, that shame that I should never have had this idea. How dare I have this idea? I don't even know where it came from. Oh my God. It moves down this highway called the HPA axis. And it moves down and down the highway, straight shot and deposits, boom. And it goes from an idea and a feeling, an intuitive quashing, and it becomes a thing. It becomes a substance. And we know that it becomes a substance because that substance can be, has, is visually available. There are ways to see how it grows and grows and grows. The more we feed these quashing moments, the more we have these moments of emotionally 
shaming ourselves, mentally shaming ourselves, physically shaming ourselves. God, I hate my period. Oh, it just totally slows down my life. Why do I have no energy when I'm menstruating? All of those things that we say, they get deposited to this relay boop, 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 and they get thrown in the bank. And what happens is that the body says, well, uh, we'll get rid of it. We will, we will offload all of this energy that has gone from, from intangible to tangible energy to mass in our body. We're going to offload it with the lining of our uterus. We're going to offload this, this energy that's become um, tangible. And it tries to. But what happens if even before your first menstrual cycle, you've been doing this for years. Well, then your first menstrual cycle is going to be really, really painful because the body's trying to push up a lot, push out a lot of, a lot of matter, not a lot of strength because our body's not made. It's not made to have muscular abs. We're not made to have muscular abs as people born with a uterus. So fine tuning those muscles and building the muscles so they can push things out is not something that we intuitively innately do. Most of us have very strong legs because we walk. Walking is an expected thing that we're going to do. Pushing out mass amounts of matter during our menstrual phase, not a common thing that we're going to do, not an expectation of our body. And so what our body says is it goes, okay, I need to push this out. I keep getting more of this matter. I need to deposit it in other places. And so what I'll do, and this is where the irregular periods come in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have more periods. If I have more periods, then I can push more out at each time that I have the period. And that's how you have shorter periods. And then it's like, oh man, this is really taxing my body. I need to recover. I, I, can't, I can't go through this mass exodus every 21 days. Okay, so now you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to have periods farther apart or better yet, and this is what some clients come with, I'm just going to have a long menstrual cycle. And I have clients who have come to me with two and three and four month long periods where they are shedding the lining of their uterus. And of course, you don't have enough lining to shed. So you're also shedding other essential needs that your body needs to have. You're just shedding it all over a long period of time because you are, because your body's trying to offload all this stuff that you're feeding it. So now let's talk about why you're feeding this to your body. Let's go back to that first example. You had an idea, but you don't have the facts and the figures. You don't know where this idea came from. To you, it feels like it came out of the blue. It didn't. It's just that we, as people born without a uterus, we do not take information and process it and then bring it back out. We actually are always absorbing and we are always absorbing information. And when we absorb the information, it percolates in our body. Then it roots. And as it's percolating and bouncing off of the different knowings that exist in us, uniquely in us, because of our culture, because of our generation, because of our family life growing up, because of what we're interested in already, because of the knowledge that we've already gathered as people on this planet for however many years we've been here. As it percolates through all parts of ourselves, our intuitive body, our physical body, our emotional body coming from the left, our mental body coming from the right, as it's percolating, just like a rubber ball, if you've ever had a rubber ball and you bounced it, if you bounce it on different materials, when it bounces off that material, it's going to have a trace of the material that it bounced off of. Does that make sense? And so as it bounces off of these different parts of ourselves, it gathers these traces of and eventually it gets heavy enough that it stops bouncing and it roots. And then it roots, and then it roots through these chakras, through the root chakra, through the sacral chakra, through the solar plexus, through the heart chakra, through the throat chakra. <gasps> to the third eye, the mind chakra, it blooms and it shows up to us as a revelation, as an inner knowing. We don't know why we know what we know, but it is so good. It's our innate superpowers as people born of the uterus. We be, we absorb. The information percolates roots and blooms as an inner knowing. And then the last part of the process is that we must, we must share it. You didn't share it because you didn't get the information you don't have that information that you think that you need to have to be able to validate your right to speak up. Our friends who were born without a uterus, they don't have that stuff on themselves because they grew up in a world where the way that they take in information and the way that they share it is acceptable. They, the power chakra for people born without a uterus is the third eye. Eyes, ears, very dependent on the outside world. So they can tell you why, where, and what about how they have specific information. Our information is coming in a much broader way and because of that, it is very rich, it is very powerful, and it is very prescient when it blooms and shows up and comes out through your mouth, through your third eye, through your mental knowing. But because who and how we are, we don't trust it because we live in a world curated by people born without a uterus, and they're, I'm not condemning them, I'm just saying they were out of the cave first. I mean, again, look at the paper. Um, so they don't second guess themselves, we do, and that second guess becomes the shame, becomes the quashing that I spoke about earlier. And that is why we're more likely to collect all of this stuff down to our uterus. Our friends, they have an HPA axis as well. They have, instead of the ovarian relay, they have the prostate relay. I'm sure it's called something more scientific, but they have the same thing, but a lot less is getting deposited because they live in the world that they curated and created. 
and we are adapting, but we don't actually have to adapt. When we start to curate the world through how we're being in the world, when we start to listen to the inner knowing and share it instead of pushing it away and suffocating it, we will end up no longer depositing distress. We receive the eustress, but eustress doesn't deposit. I wish I could tell you why, but for our knowledge, for what our needs are and for why you're here, right? Because you're here because you want to end your period pain. And today's symptom that we're talking about is inconsistent periods. When you stop depositing that, the body no longer has to figure out how to offload. And by the way, when you're having short periods, your body doesn't get to have the physiological processes that exist in each menstrual phase. So you don't want to shorten your period because you don't want your, your menstrual cycle because you don't want your body to miss out on any physiological processes. Conversely, you don't want your period to come every 45 days because again, that means that your body is using resources that it doesn't have because the processes are prolonged or excuse me, protracted. We don't want that either. We want consistent cycles that happen in a consistent time span. When we do this work, when we stop quashing, when we start living in alignment with our needs, what I call menstrual alignment, or what I also call radical cycle syncing, so how we eat, how we do our tasks at work, how we work out, when we start to intuitively listen to the directions that our body gives us, because it will speak up when we stop to listen, and when we learn to listen in the right way, we don't need a list of foods, we don't need special exercises, we don't need special supplements, we don't need hormone therapy, we don't need all this stuff, because the body is quite sophisticated. And it has a lot of the answers. So that is how you get to consistent periods in a sustainable way. It's not a quick fix. It can take from two weeks to 90 days to start seeing the beginning of the change. It all depends on how willing you are to shift. And as they say in the rooms, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. What I can tell you is that everything that I just described, three week cycles, 45 day cycles, inconsistent cycles. That's part of my history. I suffered. I was on the brink of having to talk about the hysterectomy surgery, having to talk about going on psychotropic medications to treat my PMDD. I was on the brink of losing it all to the best ideas that medicine can offer. But external intervention often, and we hear this, we hear this a lot. One surgery leads to three surgeries because when I push this, then I pulled that. And then I did this and then this and then this. And we have to constantly reorient and fix the things that we have out of order because we're trying to fix the thing that's out of order. When menstrual order is simply like this, menstrual disorder, menstrual order. I'm sorry if you want a pill to fix you. I've tried to have pills fix me, didn't work. Let me save you those 10 years and make it super simple. Live in alignment with your womb. The way to do it is to start the impulses that occur to you, voicing the revelations that are really, really good ideas. But some of us can't just do that. I know I couldn't. I needed a lot of help and I got help. And that's why I created the collective so that you don't have to work with three coaches at the same time to try to be willing to live in menstrual alignment like I had to. So I really hope that this helps. Please send your comments. Please comment on the video or just contact us directly. We're here to help. And when we get consistent periods, things like fertility, things like vacations and relationships become a lot easier. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace.